gate today and talk about appraisals and whether or not as a home seller you should get an appraisal before you list the house. And this is a hot topic because it's, it's debated by a lot of real estate professionals. And we're going to tell you our opinion today and, and certainly uh, you know, talk about the pros and cons of it. But um, I think we've been pretty uh, con getting a real estate appraisal prior to listing the house. And Robert, I'll let you, you know, share some of your thoughts and experience through you know, listing hundreds of homes as to why you know, it's, oh we don't gosh. think it's a great uh, idea all the time. On the spot right here. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, well... I think that honestly, it it's it's such a hard thing because when the market's changing and when appraisers are using comps that are six months to a year old, even though they don't like to go that far back, it's hard because especially with the prices going up over the past couple of years, sellers want to feel like they're justified in their price. Okay, so we go in, we we do a CMA with the sellers, we go over what the market analysis is at that moment. And sometimes the seller will disagree with you. Sometimes the seller thinks their home is worth much more, which I get as a homeowner sure. myself. And they want to then go out and they want to find an appraiser who can then kind of back up what they're saying. Or right. maybe they have an insurance appraisal that sure. you know backs up what they're saying. So the, the issue is that when that buyer comes in for that property, and let's say the appraisal is 25000 higher than you were thinking, that doesn't automatically mean that a buyer is going to come in and pay that price, right? It does, and it also uh, you you can tell this from the lending side, Mike. Um, the so if a buyer comes in to buy a property and the seller had the appraisal done beforehand, the lender and the buyer can't. It's really meaningless. No, we still have to get a new one. We have people come to us all the time and say, "Hey, can you use this one?" And after the financial crisis, the Home Value Code of Conduct required us to be completely independent of it. So. We actually have to use an appraisal management company. We don't even talk to the appraisers right. anymore. And can you can you explain how that process works since the financial crash? Because I feel like I get that question all the time when I meet with sellers. It's, sure. Well, what appraisers do you know, or uh, how can we make sure this appraises? And they just haven't sold a home in a long time. So right, sure. As a Basically, lender, they want to cheat. <laughs> yeah, right, right. How can they cheat? Yeah. Well, you can. And, and I do explain this to them that, listen, it's totally independent now. But from a lender perspective, can you explain that to a seller? How yeah, absolutely. Because it used to be the day you called your favorite appraiser yep. and said, hey, are we in the ballpark or whatever else? And that just doesn't exist anymore. We don't even talk to them. So now they came up with what are called appraisal management companies, or AMCs for short and which becomes kind of a liaison or a third party in between. So when we go ahead and order the appraisal, we don't even order it from an appraiser. We order it to, through the appraisal management company, and the appraisal management company goes out and solicits and recruits a group of appraisers that are going to appraise homes for them, and then they will send it out um, randomly to a group of appraisers that, that they have. So we can't even say, hey, Robert, you're my favorite appraiser. Can we give this one to him? We don't have that choice. We can't do that. We send it to the appraisal management company, and then they decide who actually is going to get the assignment and who's going to appraise the property. Well, and I always tell sellers, okay, listen, an appraisal is an opinion of value. And it's still just one yes. person's opinion. Yes. So, you know? you know, as a seller, if you all of a sudden want an appraisal of your property before listing, you can't call Bob, your friend, down the street, and he's an appraiser, and he's going to give you the value that you want. Because his opinion of value that's probably skewed by what you're telling him right. is not going to affect the next appraiser's opinion of value. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, we, because we do the instant cash offer program when we buy homes, we have people all the time that will call and say, well, what percentage of appraisal, I have an appraisal, what percentage of that appraisal will you buy the house? Like, first off, I don't even care about your appraisal, right. because you could have hired your uncle's brother's cousin to do it, and it, it could be wrong, you know? But but the reality is, is you're right, it's still a biased one person's opinion that's looking at some criteria, but man, I've seen two appraisers be 20% off on a house before. So the, the reality is, is you can't use it anymore, so as a seller, the only thing it can do is mislead you. Uh, the other thing an appraisal does that I don't like is it looks backward. Um, you know, we want to look forward when we're selling the house, so we want to we want to make uh, predictions and decisions based on data that's happening right now. Not a sale that happened six months ago, but what's going on in your neighborhood right now. And an appraisal doesn't factor that in. And I think they have historically done a very poor job at uh, factoring in appreciation and depreciation in neighborhoods and saturation rates. So they're looking only at sold comparables. So if a neighborhood has a whole ton of homes come on the market all of a sudden, but they had pretty good sales the last six months, your appraisers, you know, your appraisal is going to look like sunshine and rainbows, but an agent that's giving you the right advice is going to look at it and say, no, 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 you got to beat these people out. you got to compete with all these people. And, and so the, the, the other challenge with the, 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 you know, doing the appraisal ahead of time is that uh, that appraiser 
doesn't sell houses. They, they, they evaluate them based on their opinion. Okay, they're, they don't have any, they have you know, no vested interest in you getting that price. They're not going to put their money where their mouth is and say, yeah, I'll buy it if it doesn't sell. They, they appraise it, they give you a value, you pay them, okay? So they, they, they can, you can't call them up and be like, hey, dude, my house didn't sell, you know? Like, it, it doesn't work that way. So, so the best person, truly, to, to help you with pricing it is an agent because they have a vested interest in the sale. They want to get the highest price because the higher the price, the more that they earn as well. Uh, but, but, and secondly, it's their reputation on the line. So I think the, the only rare circumstances where I would recommend an appraisal beforehand, I mean, and, and it's rare, is, is like super uniqueness to a property, um, you know, maybe a really large property that's hard to value where there, there aren't comparables. It would just be really, really rare for me to recommend that in, in today's market um, that we have going on. And I recommend that not necessarily so we know the value of the property because I think you know Andrew and we even go into luxury properties a lot of times we have kind of a value in our head um, especially based on like you said what's currently on the market what's the saturation rate but I think for a luxury property I think that once you come up with a value with the seller and a lot of times with the appraisal as well I think that that appraisal in hand is always great to show a buyer if they request it because sometimes really wealthy buyers, they want to feel like they kind of can hard fact see that they're sure. not overspending. Yeah. And another that, good that's agent a good reason. Yeah, and another good agent might say, Hey, can you help me out? Do you have an appraisal for this property? And for right. luxury properties, it is it can be it can be effective. Yeah. And uh, you know, and, and again at the same time if you're not gonna listen to our buy stream, you're gonna gonna go give an appraisal appraisal anyway. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't use that as your only cool. basis for, for information. Go talk to, you know, call us, get a second opinion, look at the value and because here's the thing. Retail value doesn't mean what it will sell for. Right. You know, I, I sold two houses this week of my own above asking price that I think, quite frankly, went above retail. Fortunately, they were cash, so that I don't have an appraisal issue. But but the, the reality is, is that uh, sometimes you can get above market value. You know, I've seen people get a house appraised and then hold on to that appraisal for six months and then put the house on the market. Their home was underpriced. Because they, you know, they, they think that that appraisal is like, um, you know, like like a check. You know, they can carry it on with them. It's it's not, a, you know, we're not in a vacuum. You know, that appraisal is good for only that exact moment that they generate and provide it to you. A week or two later, quite frankly, it could be it could be wrong. So I think it's it's super important for people to. Um, you know, to take appraisals with a grain of salt, and 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 I'm definitely not a you know person that recommends for most sellers getting one you know ahead of time. I think it's far more effective to um, you know to, to put the house on the market with an agent you know marketed it, 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 information that we have available today, not old data. Well, and, and I wish I wish Angela was here to roundtable with us because there is a huge difference between insurance, an insurance appraisal oh, yeah. and a loan appraisal because. I will say, I also meet with many sellers who say, yeah, you know, I just had my house appraised last year for the insurance, and it said blah, blah, blah. And I have That's to rebuild value to explain to yeah. them yes. that that is not the value of their home. Right. And I know Mike can speak to that as well. That, that's totally what an different. insurance company is insuring it for or the, what they want their basis to be for insurance and not what someone will buy it for. Because the reality is, is an appraiser is an appraisal is still a person's opinion. It's yeah. one person's opinion. And, and you know, guess who's... Guess whose opinion really matters? The buyer. That's it. That's the only one. Who's going to pay for the house? That's it. That's the only person that matters. You know, and and so, um, you know, but an insurance appraisal, Mike, you've run into this too. You know, they're 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 basically skewed for the purposes of the insurance company's data and protection. Absolutely, and the estimated cost to rebuild the house if there was a catastrophe or whatnot and goes into it and they use different metrics and everything else to go. And I was going to say as well, in our marketplace here with appraisals, Right now, in an appreciating market, time is your friend because, again, appraisers look backwards. So if you get a house appraised today, but you then don't list your house for 60 days, you could be missing out on very important yeah. sales that sure. will actually support the and, value you want to get. And, and that, that's most of the time right in today's market, but there are neighborhoods where that's opposite.